Hello my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that I've been given the pleasure to introduce myself to you, I'm Vanessa Samina and welcome to the fam. You guys, it is the end of the week and you know exactly what that means. Your weekly prediction gets dropped straight into your subscription feed. Because I want you guys to be prepared each and every week so you guys know that I don't miss any week. So if this is the first time that you've tuned into my channel and you would in fact like to see predictions on a weekly basis alongside of a lot of other fun videos each week, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications bell on. And as you can see, the mane is back this time of the year. is always a great time for me to wear my hair out. I remember in one of my older videos, one of the ones that just blew up to over 200,000 views, one of you guys actually ended up wanting to trade hair. Be my guest. The heat that accumulates under this bushiness is just insane. But at the same time, it's just so liberating and freeing to just wear my big, curly, bouncy, natural hair. Because if any of you have different textured hair, maybe you're just very unique looking in general, just something that sets you apart from the majority of people that are around you, you know the struggles, especially growing up, bullying, being made fun of. So embracing what you have despite those struggles, I really truly believe that it is a responsibility of not only us curly girls, but just anybody out there who has been through something like that. Embrace yourself. Don't let the bullies or the haters stop you from being you and just shining your light. So just a little something that I wanted to get out there before I get into the reading. So you guys don't panic, just relax in today's reading. I want you to focus 100% on the crystals. That is why I have not laid out any cards whatsoever in order for you to be able to pick more clearly. So the four groups for your upcoming week are as follows. We have the orange calcite, we have the orchid calcite, we have the tiger eye, as well as the black tourmaline. And as usual, you guys, the timestamps will be down below as well as a link for personal readings. Yes, you guys, a thanks to each and every one of you watching my videos, commenting, purchasing things from my online store, just supporting me in every way that you possibly can. I am now able to offer personal readings, finally. I know so many of you ask me that in the comment section. The link for the personal readings will be down below in the description box. But I know and completely understand that not each and every one of you has the means right now to spend money on a personal reading and that is why I just continuously create all of this free content because I want you guys to benefit from it. I want you guys to be able to capitalize off of my readings and to motivate you guys and inspire you. If you feel like tuning into one reading isn't quite enough, then feel free to tune into multiple ones. Whatever works for you, sis. I know, longer intro today, but I had a lot to say to you guys and I hope that that's okay with you. But now I'm going to be getting into the readings and I will start off with the first group which corresponds responds to the orange calcite. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading. I just had to hydrate just to make sure that I'm ready for your reading. So you chose the orange calcite group number one and I... <laughs> And I want to get straight into your reading about your upcoming week. So just lean back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm going to be starting off with the Lightworker cards, or at least that's what I call them. So first and foremost, we have a Pleiades. In Pleiades, one thing that I see is that your next week has a lot to do with sort of like a collective upliftment, a collective sort of energy channeling. By that, I mean just you sort of realizing that humanity as a whole needs to work together and needs to believe in each other for things to work out. And you're going to notice it in the little things that happen next week. Like for instance, needing to contact customer service for something, or maybe there's traffic going on where people need to work together in order to make sure that things continue flowing and things work out. So just sort of like that understanding that we're all in it together and that each and every one of us plays an important role in this world. And if we all put ourselves together and understand that we all have value and we can all make a change, then big things are able to happen. In the Council of Light, I see divine orchestration. I see that you will realize that you have helpers in your life in very like subtle ways, if you will. And then we have get grounded. So getting back to your natural core, natural root is another thing that I see 
for you, group number one, and next week. But let's get a little bit more in depth in your reading. And get grounded, I see that you are a naturally empathetic, but next week you have to reconnect with the nature. And maybe you already have something scheduled where you will spend more time in the nature, maybe going on a walk. And if you don't have anything scheduled yet, you know, like put on those hiking boots, make sure you get that rain jacket ready and a little sandwich and plan that trip where you just go out in the nature to see what's going on and reconnect with you at your core because being out in the nature just allows you to remove yourself from the daily hustle and bustle and ground your energy back to where you can be more productive and feel more at ease and less anxious. And in the Council of Light, there's something that's going to happen next week. Maybe you're gonna find a little bit of money in one of your pockets. Maybe you're going to realize like, wow, okay, I never thought this would work, but it's actually working. This is no coincidence. This must be the universe. So there are going to be little signs of the universe actively working in your life and on your life, especially on your dreams, so to say. So if your dream is, for instance, to start your own business, maybe your own YouTube channel, there's going to be a sign next week that's going to teach you like, hmm, okay, maybe I can use the universe as well as manifestation to my advantage because clearly there is something here. There's some sort of form of energy or intelligence around me. And then in summer, I see that it is a time for you next week to bask in joy and light and that may come very naturally. You may feel a lot more upbeat next week than you have in the past months or weeks or just overall just like you're getting somewhere and that may have a lot to do with just your helpers in the sort of invisible realms, your helpers, your divine helpers that are here sending you little signs that they are in fact around. And in the protection guardian, I definitely see that you have to just allow people to come into your life, new people, drop your shields. And next week, there may be somebody who is trying to enter into your life, trying to get to know you, and you may be blocking it off or not even noticing that they're making an active effort. So try and be hypersensitive towards people's efforts. Try to truly put yourself in their shoes because for some people, it's really hard to put themselves out there and to try and make a connection. And maybe it's really difficult for you as well. And you've just sort of gotten so numb to getting to know new people because it doesn't happen very often that you welcome a new friend into your circle for whatever reasons and not judging but next week i see that there may be a possibility there to make a new connection to form a new relationship and i want you to be open to it group number one then we have the divine director intervention and purpose i see that divine intervention is happening and this just sort of gives more power to the council of light the council of light is just sort of like the light worker energy that surrounds you you are a light worker but your divine may also be made up of light worker or light worker energy and in the divine director i just see that you will know that you're being guided and that will lead to more happiness as we have in summer that may be the reason why summer is in your reading and why happiness joy return because finally you feel a little bit more protected finally you feel like in the protection guardian like you can drop your shields and just relax a little bit and draw cool, one thing that I see here is that you have to remember that you're on a path though. Don't get too carried away in having fun, basking in light and joy and just feeling sort of like this lightness, this feeling of protection. Make sure that you still stay focused on your goals because next week I see that maybe this new relationship or just divine intervention may have you feel carried away from what is actually happening. So if things are moving around your goals, that could be in your love life, that could be with your career, things are shifting, be watchful, still, like still be there. Don't allow people to completely have your future, your goals in their control. Say at work, for instance, if things are going well, don't just sleep on your goals. Don't just say like, oh, well, everything is going fine, so I'll just let it roll. Make sure that you still have sort of like control and overview in every aspect especially legally if there's for instance a contract that needs to be looked over and signed don't just think to yourselves oh i have a good lawyer i'll just have him read over it or her read over it make sure that you look over all of those important things yourself because lawyers doctors whoever it is that may be doing a service for you that is life-changing they make mistakes too and at the end of the day they are not you so as horrible as it sounds 
your well-being is not as much in their interest as it is in yours but it only makes sense right group number one we're only going to be honest here we don't need to fake things that's just how it is it just makes sense then last but not least in Bridget one thing that I see is that being out in the nature as we had in the empath as we had in get grounded is going to move you back to wholeness I see that wholeness is maybe something where a little slice has been lacking recently but next week is a great week to channel that energy back to you and just to recognize that you have the time as well as the power to do all of these things so know that being in a situation where just joy light happiness having fun is happening actually charges you up with a lot more energy than you would usually have because when you're happy when you're positive everything is so much easier to do and so much easier to accomplish obstacles are easier to overcome use this energy group number one make use of it and know that it's here to benefit you on your path on your journey that is specifically tailored to your needs as well as your capabilities so use this to continue pushing your life forward down the path of least resistance that just resonates the best with you and just have a fun positive as well as grounding week so group number one this is a reading that i received for you i truly hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful if you did let me know down in the comment section and if you've made it this far into my video but you have not yet subscribed why let's just stop playing games hit that subscribe button and i will see you in your weekly prediction next week hello group number two and welcome to your reading so you chose the orchid calcite group number two i want to get straight into your reading about your upcoming week so let's see what the cards have in stock for you First and foremost, we have the star ancestor. Following the voice of your soul is so imperative for you, group number two. Next week, you may be put in front of decisions where one choice is making your friends, your family, society happy and proud of you, or what you think is happy and proud of you. And then the other choice is following the voice of your soul, is following the voice of your heart and what you truly feel is right for you, because those are often two different things. Remember that with friends and family, there is a certain amount of fear involved they're always afraid like oh is this really the right decision of you sometimes with friends and family there's also an element of jealousy where they actually do not want you to succeed even though they love you and I know it's like a really weird thing but let's be real we've all been there and do not let that stop you from making the right decision because at the end of the day only you go through your joyful moments and only you go through your pain and suffering they're never going to go through the pain and suffering that you go through when you neglect following your heart and following your soul keep that in mind that is really important for you group number two and then in the oracle one thing that i see is that you need a little bit more information so in order to make the right choices for you group number two i want you to make sure that you always feel satisfied with the amount of information that you have if you feel like you need a little bit more information in order to truly be able to be sure about the choice that you're making then gather it or wait for it or request it if you need more information say about something that you want to purchase online or a contract that you're signing or maybe you're looking into furthering your education and you're not 100 percent sure if the school that you're looking at is in fact the right one for you request further information write that email make that phone call get out of like go out of your way to retrieve the information needed then in autumn, one thing that I see is that you have to release the old and rest. Autumn is a time where the trees change their color. They sort of let the old go, which is the leaves that were there during spring and summer. And now they're of no use and they're just sort of chewing up too much energy. And that is exactly why trees let go of them because they're getting ready, ready for winter and also a new season where new growth will be happening. And the same is the case for you, group number two. Next week is a great week for you to sort of let go of your leaves if you were a tree so to say or you know if you just look like me and you're you're actually a tree just let go of it and i don't mean shaving your head off or doing anything like that i mean energetically let go of the old let go of what was earlier this year if you have not been having a great 2019 who cares you have two more months left or almost two more months and who knows what could happen these could be the best two remaining months of your life you don't know but one thing that you do know is that if you go into these two months 
with a negative mind, then they will never be the best two months of your life. But if you go into it, giving it a fair chance, you know that you're allowing for the possibility to be there for these next remaining two months, two years, 20 years, 200 years to be in fact the best time ever. So keep that in mind and take your power back when it comes to that. Then, and you're already doing it, I see that you need to stop overthinking. I feel like there's an area of life where you're just restless. You're not sure what to do. Maybe it's financially in love or there's sort of like a situation of friction in one of your relationships. But you have to remember that just facing your true north and never losing who you are, your core values, as well as your integrity is so important, especially when you're dealing with somebody close to you, especially if it is maybe a toxic family member. So do not give people a privilege or just sort of like a free card because they're close friends or family. If you feel like you're not being respected, if you feel like you're not being allowed to follow the voice of your soul, address it and if it makes no difference then still do what is best for you because as i said at the end of the day you experience your life nobody else is going to be living your life going through the highs and the lows for you so know that you're already sort of in the headspace of doing that sometimes you just need to follow through a little bit more and sometimes you just need to demand a little bit more respect and set in place healthy boundaries in awakening one thing that i see is energetic upgrades so your energy is upgrading next week group number two which is awesome and you may have accomplished this through having a crystals around you maybe you've accomplished this through wearing crystals on you i know that i love wearing my crystals on me just because i feel like they give me good energy good vibes and you may feel the same way either way in this awakening i feel like spirituality is just like a gradual sort of awakening you keep realizing things you keep coming into contact with new forces new energies that give you new insight as well as ideas on how you can heighten your vibration and just become more positive and more free in your life then in charity one thing that i see is that prayer and contemplation can help you towards a lot more sort of um, mental freedom i see that mental freedom to you is letting go of fear it is letting go of doubt and anxiety and that sort of freedom is true wealth that a lot of people struggle with even people who are say rich financially they struggle with being spiritually wealthy but that is a place where i see that you are on a good path you're facing in the right direction and you just got to keep going you know keep listening to inspirational videos readings keep listening to amazing podcasts manifesting working with crystals as well as detoxifying your body all to get to a higher spiritual realm and vibration in el moria one thing that i see is that um your awakening presence is here next week you realize that the universe is with you and that it gives you this cloak of protection of and love if only you have love and compassion everything just works way better than when you leave those things at home so whenever you leave the house next week group number two wear your cloak of love and compassion when you see somebody doing something stupid have compassion and dare i say somebody doing something stupid but let's be real some actions are just not smart they're unintelligent and people still do them and when you love the person you tend to want to tell them but at the same time just have compassion remember all the things that weren't so intelligent that you have done in the past and how you were able to make those mistakes without somebody maybe calling it out each time and if you did have somebody calling out each and every one of your mistakes um first and foremost i am deeply sorry you had to go through that and then second of all you know that does not mean that you need to be that person calling out everybody's mistakes let people make their mistakes just like you continue to make your mistakes as life goes on and you grow from them last but not least though group number two we have saint germain and saint germain one thing that i see is that you have to move beyond any type of drama i feel like drama or gossip is constantly trying to come into your life especially next week there may be somebody who constantly wants to talk to you about drama and gossip and you're not here for it you know that it is damaging to your aura it is damaging to your energy and it is just toxic and i know that you know gossip sometimes is fun like no gossip never killed anybody but there comes a point where it is just malicious where it is just nasty and where it's just straight up toxic i mean just having a little laugh about a commercial that doesn't make sense something like that you know it's harmless it's not 
trying to maliciously hurt somebody, but when gossip is constantly just negativity about other people, don't get sucked into that because it is addictive. You know, gossip is something that a lot of people cannot live without. They breathe and live for gossip or live and breathe for gossip. And I don't want that to be something that you incorporate into your life or that you get addicted to group number two. So steer away from any of that kind of energy next week as it may be trying to enter your life but it's, it's literally not going to bring anything positive towards you. You have so much more important positive work to do in this world, and that is just going to slow you down, so don't let it in. Group number two, this is the reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it motivational and inspiring, and I will see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello, group number three, and welcome to your reading about your upcoming week. So let's get right into it. I have three piles of cards where I will intuitively be picking a card for you about your upcoming week. So let's see what's going on. We have a take a break. So one thing that I see here is obviously that you need to take a break and also that you need to remind yourself that life is not a quick sprint. Life is sort of almost like a marathon, okay? And you have to prep for it. And there is some times where you're running where you're going to need a lot of your energy, but at the same time, there are also times where you have to rest, recuperate, and just allow your body to do its thing in peace. So if you feel like you've been working a lot, maybe trying to work out or exercise a lot, or maybe you've also been overindulging in things that are not good for you. So if you're sitting here right now eating a bag of chips, okay, I'm not judging you, but sometimes you need to give your body a break from that. And I know a lot of people say give yourself a break as in allow yourself to indulge in say chips or ice cream or cookies or whatever, but to me, giving your body a break means giving your body the best nutrients, giving your body a break from things that you know are maybe just not very healthy for your body. So think about that group number three. And in Rama, one thing that I see is that you will be feeling like you're called to journey somewhere. So maybe geographically, there is a place that you feel like you need to go to. And next week may be a great time to actually start planning that trip. But you may also be called to go somewhere spiritually. Maybe there's something you've always wanted to look into, or maybe there's a part of spirituality that you have always wanted to free yourself from. So maybe you wanted to free yourself from say a religious community, maybe you wanted to free yourself from being spiritually in the closet. You know, our paths and journeys are so different. All our experiences, good or bad, just vary so greatly. But what we all have in common is that we all know what it's like to feel sort of chained up to something. We all know what it's like to feel trapped in a certain situation and just how liberating it is when you decide to take control of your life, your actions, and the direction that you're going in and you actually step out of that zone that you've been trapped in. Then in Don't Dim to Fit In, we have exactly that. Stop dimming your light just to fit into somebody else's criteria or box or just what they feel like is right for you because a lot of people always have a lot of opinions about other people's lives and how they're supposed to live their lives but themselves they do not always practice what they preach so do not dim your light to fit into people's criteria especially people who are not 100% cohesive with what they're preaching anyways and know that you know we all have the right to have an opinion there's nothing wrong about that but you don't have to listen to every opinion the same goes for opinions in the business world if you feel like like somebody's opinion about how you should run your business or do your work is not really valid, then most likely it is not because you instinctually know when something is right and when something is fitting and when maybe something just has a little hint of jealousy there. You know when somebody feels like they're in competition with you but you don't feel like you're in competition at all because you don't really compete, you just do your thing, but you can feel like that person does not want you to move forward. That is what I'm talking about. Be aware of that and do not stop or lower your pace just to make somebody else feel more comfortable. Then in Rada, one thing that I see here is that there is a lost part of you that is going to come back to light next week. Rada just tells me that you can experience 
relationship and harmony healing, that is maybe something that you desperately needed. And the way you can do that is by letting go of any sort of anger or resentment. Maybe you resent somebody in your life or you're angry towards somebody you experience anger when you think about them, just because something that they may have done may have hurt your feelings or they may have tried to hurt you. And I know that this is like really weird, but there are a lot of friends and family who deliberately sometimes try to hurt you and you can harbor a lot of hurt feelings, emotions, and resentment because of that. But I see that letting go of that and actually being able to start healing from those experiences and maybe even mending the relationship or just getting to a point where you're okay with it, okay? That is one thing that I see for you next week, as well as just rediscovering the part of yourself that is strong and that is capable of coping with any situation, even when you're being hurt and put down. Then in Green Tara, one thing that I see is Supreme Protection. Green Tara is an amazing card for you to have in correlation to Radha, and Green Tara has her third eye very sort of prevalent on her forehead, like protruding out, and I want you to know that this has a lot to do with your instinct as well as your intuition. You have to move beyond limitations and to cut any cords that are keeping you bound. So this could be a toxic relationship as I spoke to you about, but this could also be a belief system that you have inherited. So know that belief systems are sort of programmed into us as we grow up, depending on our family and the values that we grow up with, depending on our surroundings, we get sort of like different beliefs that are passed down to us. Maybe that you have to go work as a lawyer, for instance, because you come from a line of lawyers. Maybe that it is very important for you to make sure that you under no circumstances marry somebody who is, say, in a lower societal level than you are. Or maybe that starting your own business is just going to be a failed venture. These are all different beliefs that may have been sort of passed down to us. These are all beliefs that you can break because they're just limiting you. You have to cut the cords of them and not allow them to have any power over you anymore because they're not doing you a favor. They're just basically comforting the people who came up with those beliefs and they often come up with those beliefs in order to protect their own fears and their own feelings, but they pass them down to you wrongfully and now you gotta deal with it. But you're gonna be fine, group number three. In faith, one thing that I see is humanity and benevolence. So stay calm and just trust in the good of humanity, even if it can be hard at times. And I totally get you, I totally feel you. But we also need to remember that we can look at things sometimes under a microscope that we have been given. The media sometimes gives us this microscope where you can look through it, but then you're just zooming in on the negative all over the world. But know that it is actually an amazing time to be a human being because not only is the media portraying all of these negative things, but you can also actively go and look at all the positive that is happening in the world, all the groundwork that is being done in order to help people get to a point where they can thrive, in order to allow everybody in this world to have equal rights and opportunities. So yes, you can look through the lens that mainstream media gives you, or you can decide to believe in the good of humanity and look towards people who portray that instead. Then we have soul expansion as well as Gaia. So we have two things here. We have soul expansion as well as earth connection. So reconnecting with the earth and everything that is going on is going to give you that soul expansion. So your consciousness can continuously expand and next week is a week where that is happening for you, group number three. And you understand more connections between things. You understand the connection, say, between your diet as well as getting more frequently or less frequently. You understand the connection between what you consume and all of the natural disasters that are happening in this world. So these are obviously just examples, but what I mean by that is just being very connected with what is going on, being connected with the earth, the resources, and just what we as human beings are doing and being more mindful of the planet. That is coming up next week. I see that there may be sort of like a documentary or just something that you read that is going to have an impact on you where you feel like, wow, I really need to expand my consciousness a little bit more when it comes to the planet that we all inhabit and should all show love towards. So group number three, this is the reading that I received for you. I 
truly hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it motivating and inspirational. Let me know down in the comment section if you did. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe to get your weekly readings and your subscription feed. I'm sending you tons of love and light and I will see you in one of my upcoming readings. Hello group number four and welcome to your reading. So you chose the black tourmaline group number four. I wanna get straight into your readings, but first I need to hydrate. I just find the crystal water just always tastes so much better. If it works, it works. So let's move straight into your reading and figure out exactly what's coming towards you next week. So we have summer, basking in light and joy. I see a happy place, a place where you're able to just enjoy what's going on right now, be mindful and be in the moment. Keep in mind that the past as well as the future and the present, they all do not really exist because they're all happening right now, if you know what I mean. In an hour is the future, but at the same time, like we're constantly moving into the future as well as leaving things behind. So the only thing that you have really is the now. Be mindful of it. I know I'm, I suck at explaining those types of things, but you guys always get me. I just feel like we have this deep like core connection. You guys just understand exactly what I'm trying to say even when my English is not always the best. But let's see what else is up. We have the snake, so shedding old skin. And there are a lot of snakes on this planet, you know, both animals as well as human beings, but not all of them are snakes in a, say, a negative sense. Some of us are snakes that shed skin in order to renew positively. Shedding your skin just like a snake can be you sort of coming into a new phase of your life, into a new cycle, or just a new belief system where you believe that everything is possible and you can achieve greatness. And that is one thing that I see for you next week. I see you shedding another old layer of skin, allowing a fresh one to breathe. But I also want you to nourish this fresh skin. You know how when you exfoliate your skin that it is all tender and sort of like baby skin. So make sure that you moisturize it and hydrate it. Make sure that you take care of the new skin that is coming to light especially mentally, emotionally, meditate, take time to write down affirmations, and also make a lot of time for self-care where you go out, you are active, you're moving, and you're giving your body the nutrients and oxygen that every cell deserves. Then in the elder, I see that next week you'll be able to move past ancestral patterns. So ancestral patterns are something that can resurface very often and in situations where you're just like, huh, why is this happening to me? So if you have, for instance, a dream of becoming a scientist or maybe you want to be a YouTuber or an author and it's just not something that has been seen as a very good thing to do. From your family, their beliefs and values, maybe it just shows that what you want to do is not the norm, is out of the box and I want you to move beyond those limitations because that is what they are. They're limitations. You do not need to fit into that box in order to be a part of that family. And I know it sounds weird, but sometimes you feel almost like being the odd one out almost makes you not only an outcast, but almost like not a part of that lineage or that family. But know that the people who try new things, people who try new things in families, know the people who change the way the game goes in their lineage are the ones that are celebrated and looked up to the most. Just look at history where people were being oppressed and the ones who stood up to oppression, the ones who thought out of the box, out of any sort of limitations that have been put upon them and their community. Those are the ones that we celebrate today and look up to. And that is the kind of person that I see in you. And I see that next week there will be doubts put in front of you that make you want to stay in your box. Just curl yourself up and not be the odd one out. But you are meant to be the odd one out. You are meant to change things. You are meant to be the person who has the strength to do that and you have the responsibility. So don't run away from it, group number four. This is how it is, but know that you will be celebrated. Know that you're going to receive recognition for the work that you do. Sometimes it just takes time for people to come to the realization. Then in Gaia, one thing that I see is your earth connection coming fourth next week in a way that may have a lot to do with these ancestral patterns. So maybe you're going to be thinking a lot about what your ancestors went through, the sort of obstacles that they had to overcome, and it's going to make you feel a lot more connected to 
earth as well as other people in your community or in your current circle so talk about it allow yourself also to look a little bit more into history to delve a little bit more into it maybe even go and see like a site a historic site that can make you reconnect with your lineage where you're from and to remind yourself that standing out being the odd one out may be weird right now but all of the people who made history down the line in your lineage were the ones who were different and were brave enough to just do what they knew was right. Then we have the Miriam. So in the Miriam, one thing that I see is that you have to choose to forgive in order to heal. So anybody who has made life difficult for you, anybody who has put obstacles in front of you and made you dim yourself to appease their worldview, I want you to forgive them and to remind yourself that you were just trying to do something nice at the end of the day. You were just trying to appease somebody. You were just trying to show love by not making that person feel threatened and know that love has no boundaries if you were able to do that for another human being surely if they want to they can now let you live your life to the fullest but notice how I said if they want to not everybody wants you to live your life to the fullest not everybody is here to see you thrive and succeed and that is just one thing that I want to put out there that I'm not going to sugarcoat it can even be close friends and family who do not want to see you succeed and it is a sad reality but at the same time you need to detach you need to remember that you can only feel what goes on in your soul and your body so happiness is something that you can only feel through being in this situation through being in your current body through having your soul live in this temple so if your temple if your soul wants to do something do it if it makes you happy just keep the snakes at arm's length if you will so let's move further into your reading. We have don't dim to fit in. As we already spoke about, there are snakes in the tall grass around you. There are snakes that you maybe have not even seen. So keep your eyes open in group number four. And then we have the priestess. So one thing that I see in the priestess is that you're being called to step up and lead, but the whole thing is about the how. Which area of your life are you being called to step up and lead in? It may be, for instance, when it comes to children, maybe you need to lead somebody younger than you, maybe your own children, and you just need to step up a little bit more and be that leader role. Maybe you just also need to lead your career down the direction that you know that it needs to go into now in order for you to get to that next goal, to get to that next checkpoint where you can just tick off one of the things that you desperately wanted. But you have to make sure that you don't miss the exit because sometimes the exit can be missed. Just like when you're driving down the freeway and you miss an exit, you're going to have to loop around for maybe even a very long time until you can get to that point where you can take the right exit down to your goal again. So see it as that and know that you need to know when to take off, when to move in another direction in order to not miss the opportunity. Last but not least in Pleiades, one thing that I see is that what is essential for you is to know that you're on a mission here on this planet. And your mission has everything to do with providing a service to humanity, with providing value to humanity so what way you do it in does not matter maybe you love creating pick a card readings just like myself and that is a sort of value that you're giving to this planet you're helping people you're uplifting people maybe your service to this planet and to humanity is to help people through therapy maybe you teach maybe you allow people to learn through you there's so many different ways how your mission is going to show but know that wealth is especially financially, will follow as soon as you're doing what you're meant to do and you're of some sort of service to this world. So don't freak out if you feel like you're putting a lot of work out there and you're providing value to people, value that people need and want and progress has been slow, progress is going to come. You need to make sure that you remain vibrationally on a frequency of abundance, on a frequency where you believe in yourself and you're not putting yourself down in order to start to see the results just coming in and continuously learn group number four. That is one of the most important things that I want to point out to you. With this new sort of skin that you have where the old skin is shed, learn as much as you can about every situation, be it spirituality, be it your job, be it how to have successful relationships. Get in the classroom and widen your knowledge. 
So group number four, this is a reading that I received for you. I truly hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. If you did, be sure to let me know down in the comment section as well as to give this video a big old thumbs up and I will see you in one of my upcoming videos. Thank you.